Okay guys, so in this video I'm going to show you kind of the differences between Grunt, Gulp, Webpack and NPM script. So let's get into it. So what we're going to cover is basically I'm going to give you an exp explanation as to what is Grunt, what is Gulp, what is a Webpack and NPM script. Like why these tools are useful, what they kind of do and when to use what. So first and foremost, let's, let's just walk through my notes here. So let's talk about task runners. So Grunt and Gulp are what we in the industry call task runners. Now a task runner is just a tool that allows you to run common tasks. For example, let's say that you have a bunch of files you want to copy to one from one directory to another. That's a task, that's a task, if you will, something that you have to do. And it usually is something that is kind of tedious to do manually. I mean, if I wanted to copy this file here in index.html to this file folder over here, I am doing that manually every time I do a recompilation of my code. That would be a lot of hassle involved in doing that. So having a task runner that can automatically do that for me is something that is really desirable because then I can automate some of my work process. So that is what a task runner is all about. So Webpack is something that is what we call a bundler. So a bundler, the job that a bundler has is that it takes your JavaScript files and it allows you to write basically one file of JavaScript with some code and then another file of JavaScript with some other code and then you can tell the bundler that, all right, I want the first file to include the code from the second file so you can actually connect your files together and create much more complicated programs than you could back in the day when you had to basically make sure that everything was in the same file and you had to make sure that one thing came before another and so forth. And basically that's what Webpack does for you. It figures out how to put together all of your files into one file or a few files that you can then use in the browser without you having to figure that out yourself. So it's really efficient for large scale JavaScript development. And then we have NPM scripts. Now, what is NPM scripts? Well, NPM scripts is just a, it's just a, think of it as a command structure that NPM, the package manager, provides to you so you can run common scripts. So you can basically just give a name to a shell command that you want to be able to run over and over. So basically what we're saying here is that we, we have three different tools that all tie into this one common notion, which is that you have some type of operation or some task you want to be able to run, but you don't want to have to do it manually. So that's the kind of the red line through all of this. Now, the thing that you need to consider when we talk about these different tools, or rather these are the things that I've found when I've been working with these tools for a few years, is that they have their own use case and they have, luckily enough, very each of them have a very strong use case for the thing that I think that they're good at. So if we talk about a task runner, now in general a task runner is just an abstraction on top of another tool. In other words, it's just a wrapper around another tool. So if we take the comparison between Grunt and Gulp versus Webpack, now Grunt and Gulp can do almost all the things that we want to be able to do but they cannot do the bundling because that's what Webpack is designed to do. Webpack can bundle, Grunt and Gulp cannot bundle. So Grunt and Gulp depend on Webpack to do the bundling, but they can take care of the file copying and all the, this other stuff that comes kind of, that lives around the actual bundling. So what that means is that Grunt and Gulp now wraps Webpack. So under the hood, you're going to use Webpack through Grunt and Gulp. So I hope that's clear. You use Grunt to run Webpack. That's basically how it works, or Gulp, whichever you prefer. So why would you want to do this? Well, the considerations as I outlined here that I use when I think about a task runner versus not using a task runner is that if I have a really large amount of complex tasks or I have a lot of coworkers that have different computers that you might, you may, I mean, I work on a Mac, but your coworkers may work on a Windows machine or they might work on something like, or say that you have a CI pipeline or an environment that you run all your code through that is working, that's using a Ubuntu distribution or a Debian distribution or Linux or whatever. Like, 
the, the thing that Gruntingalp helps you with is that they abstract away the operating system or all these shell-specific commands that you have to use if you use something like npm script. Because as I said, npm script is just a way for you to create a name for a one command or a series of commands. We're going to look at that in just a moment. Just We just have to cover the kind of the terms and the topics before we can go dive into the actual examples. So that's what I think about. Well, I use Grunt and Gulp usually when I work on a large scale project and I have a lot of different tasks that I need to run on different environments. But if I'm working as a single developer, I prefer to use NPM scripts. And the reason for that is because it's much more convenient for me to just use an NPM script than use the tool directly because one of the thing that you should be aware of is that when you create a wrapper around the thing that you want to use, the actual tool, what you're doing is that you are now you're creating an abstraction on top of another abstraction. The tool is helping you do the thing that you want to do, but the task run is, is just another layer on top of that. And I've found often that sometimes you go, you have a problem you want to solve or you want to do something in a specific way, and you could do it if you just used the underlying tool as is. But since you're using a task runner on top of it, you now have to figure out how to do it in the context of the task runner. Because the task runner is just wrapping the actual tool. So you have to be sure that the value of that extra layer is going to outweigh the potential risk to whatever it is that you want to do. So. A great example is actually taking Webpack's watch function. Like Webpack can watch the file system as is, but if you use a task runner like Grunt and Gulp, you may find that you have to ha have to do some extra trickery to do the thing that you actually want to do, or it may be fle more flexible. It kind of depends on the situation, but that's a general notion. So finally, let's talk about bundling and Webpack because Webpack is such a powerful tool that it can actually do a lot of the things that you would have Grunt, Gulp, or NPM script do for you. Now, the thing that you need to know here is that Webpack's primary function is to bundle JavaScript to allow you to build really big JavaScript projects. So what I find to be a bit of a problem in larger projects is that people use Webpack for more things. They use all these different plugins to do everything from image optimization to copying files to doing all these sorts of things, right, that has nothing to do with the actual bundling. And what the end result is, is that when you actually work, because bundling JavaScript is something you do all the time, and it's something that will, especially if you're using something like React, where you want to run a bunch of loaders and stuff of that nature, you will find that that process is going to get slower and slower and slower. The more plugins and the more tasks Webpack gets responsible for executing, the slower it's going to be. So that's a bit of a way off. It's sometimes the right thing to do because there are certain tasks you want to run as, asso as associated with the bundling and sometimes you don't. But let's, let's, let's just give you an example of how all this looks. So here is my simple little web server, which is the, basically just an express server that serves up a static file, which is the file you find here, which is this little file here. You see that there's just an h1 tag called foo. And then I have my public directory where I have my application, which is this super trivial little application that just calls or requires a module called foo and then calls the function in foo and logs that out. And this is basically the entire application. Now, through this application, I have created a scenario where we are going to need, as it is stands right now, to be to use both a task runner and a bundler. So let's just walk through how to be able how to do that. So if I run npm start, so using npm start, I can now run a command called start. So now I've executed some code. And what's going to happen now is that if I refresh my page, here is my application. And if we open the tab here, you see this is my entire trivial little application. Now, if we look at my package JSON file here, so what have I done? Well, in my package JSON file, I have declared that my command start, my script start, is going to run the command npx nodemon server.js. And nodemon is just a tool that allows me to watch the file system. So if I change something about server.js here, or I've changed something about this specific file, if I save that, or anything of that nature, you see now that the server is now restarting. So what Nodemon is doing for me is watching that file and anything that is associated with that file and updating it or restarting my server 
over and over when I'm, and this is very useful for me when I work. Then I have this little thing here, which is called pre-start. Now pre-start is just me saying that it's the same command, start, but with pre in front of it. So what I'm saying here is that, hey, whenever I run this command, run that command first. So if we go up in my little, my little outline here, you see that I actually have, actually I ran npm start and then npm run build ran before it and then it executed all of this other stuff, right? So basically what I'm saying here is that, all right, when I run this command, run this command first. And in this command, I declared that I want to do npm run build, which is this command, which means that, all right, I want to run basically webpack. I just want to run webpack and bundle my JavaScript before I start the server. And that's, that's all there is to it. Now, if we have a look at my webpack configuration here, it's, it's basically just, it's, it's a very, it's a fairly like, this is like the smallest webpack configuration I can show you without getting too much into exactly how webpack works, because that's another video, because it's a quite big tool. But basically what I've said here is that, all right, my entry file is this file over here. And the output file is going to be put in the dist directory, which is here, and I'm going to call that bundle.js. And this is, this is a very, very small webpack bundle.js file, which is the thing that I'm going to send to the client. And if we go through here, we see that we actually have a lot of gibberish and code and so forth, but this actually is the re end resulting code that we then sent to our user that showed our application and logged out that little message. And I also have this index.html file here. Now, the reason why I have it, in, like, if, you, if you're paying attention, you should notice that there's a script tag here, which isn't in the original file. It's an, almost the same file, but with a script tag. And the reason why I want that that's happening is because I'm using the HTML Webpack plugin. Now, this is what I was saying earlier. Like, this is a strong use case for a for a Webpack plugin because what I want is to avoid having to, I want to be able to have the static file and I want to be able to inject the script tag that references my bundle.js file that I'm creating. And I want to be able to do that without having to do it manually. So I can use this plugin to basically just say that, hey, this is my output file. I want you to put that there. And this is my template file. Just grab this file here and inject the script tag here and then copy it over here. That's all it is. there is to it. Now, that, and that's basically the whole build flow. Now, this is one way of doing this. So what Webpack is, as we, if just to reiterate, npm, the npm script, is just a way for me to abstract away, to create these short commands to run more complicated commands or use the, tool, the underlying, like use Webpack, for example. So I don't have to type out Webpack or Webpack Watch and all of that good stuff. But at the end of the day, this is the same thing as if I were to go and do this in my shell, npmx Webpack. If it's the exact same thing, it's just a it's just a layer on top of it. However, if we now look at say Gulp, now what does this mean? Well, Gulp is a task runner. So what I like to do here is that I create a folder that is called tasks and we can actually look at these gulp files. So let's start by looking at gulp start. So what is gulp start? Well, this is just me declaring a task for gulp. So I'm saying that, all right, I want gulp to have a command called start. And before I run that, I want to run the command build. So what is build then? Well, gulp build is this command over here. So I've declared build and I give that a callback and then I depend on webpack and I say because web I can just in require webpack as a as a function and then I grab my configuration file which is this configuration file down here and I give it a callback so that we know when the task is actually finished running and I have a watcher here as well for the same sort of this sort of thing right so what now happens is that when I run start or gulp start if I do this npm x gulp like that, we will see the exact same behavior. Basically what's happening now is that my task runner is running the build task and then it's running the start task. And the start task is depending on gulp nodemon, which is a wrapper on top of nodemon. So now I have the same behavior. Like I can refresh this and it's the exact same thing because the task runner has done all the same things as I did with my NPM script. Pretty cool. Now. 
this is just Gulp's way of doing this, but Grunt takes a slightly different approach where you do something like this, where you declare a basically a function and you do Grunt in a configuration where you now have different types of packages where you provide configuration objects and then you'd register your npm tasks. So I have a wrapper called grunt nodemon and there's a wrapper for webpack. So in this scenario, I'm not using webpack directly, I'm using a wrapper. And then I can register my task. And I say, okay, I have a task that is called start and I want the task build to be run first and then I want nodemon to be run after that. And here's my my build step, which is just going to contain a single step or a, a configuration called webpack dev. I'll, this will make sense in just a moment. And then I have one for the watcher as well. So let's look at how Grunt does this. So Grunt has a task called, well, I have a configuration which is called nodemon, which all it takes is it's just an object with a namespace, where basically saying that, okay, so this is the configuration that is as specified by my, my Grunt wrapper. And all I do is that I declare the server the server file, which you know, I want Nodemon to look at. You can make much more sophisticated configurations, and there's plenty of documentation for this wrapper, but this is the bare bone basics. And then we have the Grunt Webpack configuration, which is just going to take and require, as Gulp did, my configuration file, which is this file down here. And then I have declared two tasks. I have one for dev and one for watch. And the thing here is that I want to just grab the configuration file and then I want to set the watch property either to true or false because if I run dev I just want to compile my my assets or I want, just want to want run webpack but I don't want to run it in watch mode so that it watches the file system. So if I now do grunt start and it's going to spin up and it's going to start we will see once again that it's the exact same, it's the same behavior. So basically Grunt and Gulp and NPM script with these setups are doing the same sorts of things. Now you may wonder why am I requiring these two here, but that's basically because the convention or rather the way that Gulp works is that you have a Gulp file which acts as the entry point. This is where Gulp, the command line interface, will look for your commands. And since I don't want to declare all my commands in the same file, I just re I just require them in the Gulp file instead of having... The I could just put all of this code inside of this file instead, just like with Grunt. But I try to avoid that because if I'm already using a task runner, odds are that I'm going to have more than a few commands because if I just had a few commands and they're not that complicated I would prefer using npm scripts because it's sim it, it's much simpler. So to summarize basically what the way that you should think about Grunt, Gulp, Webpack and npm script is that Grunt and Gulp are amazing tools you can use if you have a fairly large project with, where you may have different people working on different computers, different operating systems, and you don't want to use anything that is environmentally specific. But you should also know that it is an abstraction on top of the tools that you are actually using, so it, it increases your, your surface for errors a little bit. However, if you want to keep things simple and you're just a single developer working on your own laptop or your own workstation, using npm scripts is perfectly fine. There's nothing that Grunt and Gulp really does for you that you can't do through npm scripts unless you have, as I said, this need to do much more complicated things or do things on different platforms in general. And Webpack is simply a bundler. Webpack is responsible for bundling JavaScript into something that you can send to the, to the client or to the, to the browser. However, it can do more things than that as well. As we saw, it actually copied the HTML file in this scenario. But you should be very careful when using too many plugins uh, because you don't want to treat Webpack as a task runner because that's just going to slow down the, 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 it's going to make Webpack take longer for everything that you want to be able to do. So the sweet spot in my personal experience is to figure out, all right, what are the things that I can have Webpack do because it's, it, these are the things that I want to be happen every single time that I'm bundling my JavaScript. And anything that is not critical to happen every time I rebundle my JavaScript, I want to kind of just allow npm script or have some other setup with Gulp or Grunt that does that for me, so I can for, so I can deload some of the work from Webpack. Hopefully, this was enlightening to you, and have a great day.